It's about creating a culture of learning. It's about putting apostolic feet to prophetic hope. It is our mission to purposefully equip the world to transform their region with God's love. We want to create an atmosphere of divine influence to the nations by walking in the power of His Holy Spirit with a faith that shapes the future. Welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. Hey, welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. My name is Chris, and I'll be hosting you guys today. I've also got with me some amazing people. I've got Bobby Hobby. Bobby, how are you doing? We're doing good. Thanks, Chris. Nice yeah. to be here. Awesome. Awesome. And we have Johnny and Elizabeth Enlow. I'm so excited to talk to you guys today. How are you guys doing? Doing well. We love an excuse to connect with both of you on the other side of the states. Come on. Yeah. yeah we're Awesome. Awesome. Well, we, uh, we were talking a bit about this in the pre-show, and we wanted to focus on uh, a specific area for this particular podcast, and that is leading up to this event um, that we're going to be having uh, here very soon, next week, August uh, 27th and 28th, but that is the areas of media and arts and entertainment. And I feel like this is such a relevant topic because... Um, you know, you've got this, uh, the seven mountains, and you've got these different areas, right? But I feel like, um, in some ways, the most pervasively impactful um, areas are media and arts and entertainment. They just seem to be able to penetrate every corner of the earth. Every person is affected. And so I think it's a super relevant topic. I also feel like a lot, a lot of times Christians seem to feel like they should stay away from these areas because they're so, um, you know, worldly, if you will. So it's uh, two really important reasons to kind of talk about these. I'm super excited to dig into it. But before we really get into it, I'd love to just hear your guys' thoughts and kind of explanation, real high-level view. When we say media and we say arts and entertainment, what are we really talking about? Let's lay a foundation first um, for those areas of society. Well, I'll start. Go for it. You know, just uh, a spiritual perspective of the landscape here. Uh, I identify that Apollyon is the principality over the mountain of media and that Jezebel the principality of the mountain of arts and entertainment. And if you look at what their names represent and mean, and Apollyon means destruction, and Jezebel, the seduction and you know, the counterfeit sexuality and witchcraft that comes in it, you can see these are, as you said, uh, Chris, these are dominant forces throughout the globe. And if you understand, first of all, say the mountain of media, this is literally the battle going on right in front of us. It's a worldwide battle. Everything what we can, whether you talk about, uh, you know, vaccination, the election, um, whether you can use the word fraud or not, and all kinds of censoring and everything, you can tell there's a massive battlefield in the spirit realm taking place, the mountain of media. And there is uh, an understanding the enemy has at taking the high place of communication. And if you can dominate the communication, if you can establish the narrative, that's what the war is over, is what's the narrative. If you can establish what the narrative is, and it's a distorted one, and that's what the enemy's trying to establish, then, then you rule and reign, essentially, in a, in a way, doing that. And so we have found a need, I think even some of these, um, this event upcoming, we have some people that uh, maybe weren't heard of very much before, but are now... I will say almost household names that we have uh, just people that have gained a significant following having to develop a niche outside of what's caught, you know, considered mainline or mainstream. And it's just super important. Um, and it's throughout scripture. You see it, you know, whether you go with, uh, I often like to say the first Samuel 17 story of David and Goliath was essentially a battlefield for the narrative. And it's that before, before David ever, took, cut off his head, he had to shut his mouth. And there was a confrontation over, uh, over what narrative is going to prevail. And you see that with Goliath, he scares him to death just with words. He never killed anyone, but with his words, he just took over the sound waves of Israel and nobody did anything for wow. four 
except shake. And until David came, and he's a guy who challenged him in the airwaves. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He established a new narrative. He is defying not just you, he's defying the armies of the living God because this territory, he was saying a whole lot there. This territory was given to us by our God. This was a, a, a unilateral covenant, Abraham and God. And so he's establishing a whole new narrative uh, that sort of wakes up the people. And then he proves his narrative. Uh, uh, you know, he tells them, I am going to cut your head off when I'm done with you. I'm going after your Philistine armies. And, and you know, Goliath, he, you know, you, everybody knows the storyline, but it was one taking place on the mountain of media. And so it's just huge. It's happening right now as well. And this, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal to lose that battle there. And that we as a society have lost. The church has been absent. I often have said the most absent mission field for the church is not Africa or some remote island somewhere. The most absent uh, battlefield, mission field for us has been in a true position, the, the mountain, of, uh, mountain of media. We've had, wow. it doesn't count to be uh, TV and to you know, be preaching John 3.16 to the choir. That doesn't count just because you're on TV as having a media presence. You have to be establishing the narrative from God's perspective, some narrative of hope, of a future, and you've got to be countering the other narrative. And so, again, I could go more detail on, on yeah. Jezebel and the Mountain of Arts Entertainment. I think some of that is obvious as well. But Elizabeth? Oh, I'll just defer to Chris here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, I feel like you just went right to it. And I feel like it's easily to overlook because it's it seems like almost an insurmountable you know, oh, we've we've lost that we, we've lost that island, if you will. You know, it's gone. Um, but that's really not what we're called to do. We're really called to um, to go in there full steam. And it actually brings me really to right into what we were talking about in the pre-show, um, Bobby. How you were talking about this ground game versus air game, and it kind of ties into that. Well, can you explain what you were talking about? Yeah. Thanks, you guys. This is just great to be with you. Um, I am so excited about what you're talking about, Johnny. Uh, and to jump off of that, Goliath's name actually means soothsayer. And he's just shouting into the atmosphere, and he's controlling the narrative until a David shows up with enough prowess to, to say, what are you guys doing? Because who is speaking the loudest and the narrative that's running the loudest often creates the culture. That's why when you create culture in any land, you've got to establish a narrative. And most often, uh, let's establish a language. That's why language is important. And so I, my question to you guys in this is uh, with the air game, with the, with the ground game, right? You have this ground game that's often seen in the churches. Okay, we're going, we're out on the streets. We're, we're healing the sick and raising the dead. And that's all awesome. But the air game too is what happens over the prince of the power of the air, over a region, over a nation, over a country. Uh, why is it important, especially now, to have a good air game, to have a good media, arts and entertainment? Arts and entertainment, they all make tangible what kingdom is saying now, what Jesus is saying now. Why is it important for regions to know about arts and entertainment and media and have a good air game? Um, I'll address that. I, I think when we're talking about the narrative, we're, we're basically talking about the knowledge of God filling the earth. We're talking about people having access to the fullness of not just who God is, but how he is. And each of these areas of culture, obviously, were meant to be um, done God's better way, his kingdom way. And when they are done his kingdom way, then we... Um, get to experience each area of culture in a way that tells us what God is like. Um, for example, when media is done God's way, then, then we're communicated with in a way that convinces our hearts that there is a God, He's involved, things are not just you know a string of random traumatic events, and He just looks at the events of life and of history from a distance like a reporter who's just disconnected and uninvolved. 
and gives us no context for the greater story, that's not how he communicates. He communicates as one who is in the midst with us. And so obviously, for example, when we do learn to do media his better way, um, it's going to reflect more accurately how God is as a communicator. And he always gives us a hopeful perspective. He always gives us um, facts in the context of truth, the bigger picture of truth. And so again, it's that, that when we talk about the knowledge of God and the narrative, obviously we want to see people's individual hearts impacted. We want people to have access to what God's really like. But we also are um, a witness to powers and principalities, mm -hmm. as you're saying, Bobby. We, we are what shifts in the spirit realm is just as important, if not more important, than in the natural. And, and the, the supernatural obviously supersedes the natural. And so um, when we do things God's better way and we advance the kingdom of God, God is both practical and <laughs> spiritual all at the same time. And so Yes, we we're we don't want you know corruption and compromise in Hollywood for the sake of obviously that that affects people's lives, but we're also saying that God Himself is worthy to be known as He really is, and as a creator, as the creative of all creatives, what He creates and what He puts beauty to and, and sound and color and movement and all of that produces life, not death. And so when we partner with God in either one of these areas of culture, we're, we're, we're accomplishing something in the spirit realm. I believe it's connected to Habakkuk 2.14 that, that where this is all headed is the knowledge of the glory of God filling the earth as the waters cover the sea and and. So it's for our individual hearts, but it's also that air game that you're talking about. It's in it's in the spirit realm as well. Well, and that's um, that's really good. Let me piggyback on that. That in the spirit realm, I think there's three things that are taking place in the spirit realm, and one of the reasons why we have to show up outside of the four walls of the church and on this we call the mountain of, of media. One is to uh, cast down lies. And so we see that's just a very practical thing. And I think in this event that we'll talk in a moment of coming up as well, you see our different speakers will probably each have one or two or three, I don't know how many lies that they are specifically targeting to take down. Yeah. And the lie is the unopposed narrative that, again, Apollyon, the enemy, will do out there. So there's a casting down lies. And you could say it's doing the same thing. Uh, establishing truth. There's kind of two establishing truth, cast down lies, and so, but we can list them as separate things. So we want to cast down lies. We want to establish truth. And so without media, without a voice speaking out, a voice that carries with credibility, with, uh, you know, with some conviction, there is no truth being established. And so a lie is just able to go unopposed. The lie that goes unopposed becomes believed by the masses. Back to the simple story of David and Goliath. They were assuming when Goliath said, you all can't handle me, that that was true. And then they find, found out by one spokesperson identifying the Lord's, casting down Goliath's lie, establishing the truth that a little stone could take care of him. A little stone from a little boy could take care of him. And so what comes out of that is a releasing of hope. So that's kind of uh, a third a third thing. You cast down lies, establish truth, release hope. And we believe that's just supposed to be essential to the advancement of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot really be considered as being advanced unless it releases some level of hope. Because even in what uh, the word gospel is, it means good news. And so we sometimes forget that. We're, we're, sometimes we're the PR department for the enemy. We do free commercials for him right and left, and we think we're benefiting the body of Christ by telling how many things Satan is doing, how many places. So there's a diminishing return to over-talking about what he's doing, because you don't want to be his free PR department. And, and, and then we want to understand that somehow out of our communication, there must have been something released that touched God enough and then released something from God that 
hope is the outcome, and that definitely changes the whole spiritual atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so good and so to the point. Um, and it kind of leads me to this question that might be a little controversial, maybe not, uh, it shouldn't be, but I feel like more than the other areas of society, I feel like Christians have historically been afraid of arts and entertainment specifically, but media as well. Why, why is that? Or is that not, is that not what you've seen? Definitely what we've seen. You want to go on that one? Yeah. I mean, in our religious perspective and, and wrong theology that many of us have been taught, um, God definitely doesn't have anything to do with us having fun or being right. entertained or being entertaining because we might, you know, goodness gracious, bring attention to ourselves and, um, you know, and what's so spiritual about that anyway. There's just all kinds of wrong theology. And, um, you know, and then the whole thing of media, I think people have just felt in over their heads. It's like, how do I even get involved there? It's It's been kind of this club, this insider's club. And now we're starting to see why it has been. But God is like... Um, really in the process, I believe, of just opening up the, the gates for his sons and daughters to go in and reestablish his, um, his presence and his kingdom in these two areas of culture. And speaking of the whole thing of narrative and lies, the lies ultimately are lies about God. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so for example, when arts and entertainment in Hollywood does things their way, which is anywhere from just shallow to um, more sinister than that, actually promoting um, things that are the opposite of life and freedom. Um, it, it acclimates, especially young people that, that are entertained by it, it acclimates their hearts to believe lies ultimately about God. And when you believe lies about God, then you believe lies about yourself. So entertainment that's not done God's way produces kids that are, um, you know, they, they at best live very shallow and they numb themselves on just constant entertainment. And then now that we find out there's, it's not even been that innocent. Like there's been agenda all mixed in with what we've been entertained by. And so there's this crossover between media and entertainment, like they've been in bed together in, in a serious way. And um, so when we want to, to promote truth about who God is, then we have the, the joy and the opportunity to explore these as aspects and faces of who our God is as creator and who our God is as communicator. And what we see of him, we can then reflect. And um, what a shame it would be to have these open up in the days to come, a new season of being able to really make a difference and, and reconstruct these areas of culture. What a shame it would be to show up and not value um, them for for, how do I say this, for the sake of creativity. Like, we don't have to connect everything we do to be, um, you know, John 3.16 or yeah. lead, leading to some deep spiritual truth. It can be just having a more excellent way that leads to life and freedom and its storyline um, where people, where the Holy Spirit can connect the dots for people's hearts themselves, himself. And um, same thing with media. Like, we don't have to have Christian media. We can actually show up with a voice that's relevant to um, whatever's happening in society, but do it from such a kingdom perspective, as in it leads to life and freedom and, and acclimates people's hearts to believe, wow, you're presenting this in a way that, you know, God really is involved in our lives. And they're not straight up saying that, but I can see between the lines here. Um, no, that's, that's really good. And, you know, one of the things that seems negative in society, if we understand it, there's a real positive to it. And that's the fact that, you know, we've, those who've been censored by Facebook and YouTube and uh, Twitter and all that, and it's like, oh, my goodness, they're, you know, they've created these 
information highways and if you don't do the rules their way they can knock you off but what we're finding out is never before is that you know I remember when I was a kid you know if ABC CBS NBC if three channels decided to collude on the information which we now know they probably did on most everything then they created a reality they you know we 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 could have been just dealing with uh, entirely different facts on the ground but there was no no other voice you know there was no no ability to challenge and now even what we're doing right now you know having an interview we can have an interview and have a, uh, tens of thousands even hundreds of thousands they can go into millions just people talking interacting with each other something can go viral and just go across uh, all highways and, and and begin to get something important done and so it's the opportunity is unprecedented, mm -hmm. um, perhaps by the very people who would desire to use it for control. It is it is now a, a, an absolute platform for or, you know a way that creates multiple platforms for the kingdom perspective on things to come out, and it's it's really amazing. And then what Elizabeth is saying just about arts and entertainment, yeah, you know, there's so much disinformation about God, distortion about God, and I know I grew up with that. The idea of a fun God was just for it. You know, you were if you walked around looking like you were baptized in, in lemon juice, that was mm -hmm. that was the way you should. And you know, the elders would always talk about it. it's a serious hour, brother, and not time for frivol you know, frivolous and frivolosity. <laughs> I think I just made that word up. But um, I think they did too. And it's like there's no uh, you know, who do you think God is? Do you think He's like a source of joy? Do you think in His presence is fullness of joy or something? And of course, that's exactly what the Scripture says. But we grew up thinking not, and even today, I don't think it's relevant. But when you know there's an information overload of knowing some of what you, what the enemy is doing, from human trafficking, sex trafficking, all kinds of things. Uh, going on around there, what we're hearing about Afghanistan and other things, and it's you can it can feel like it's just not appropriate right. to give yourself over to humor and joy, even though that's a foundational essence of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And then you go into Paul the apostle, who was in the midst of the persecuted, he was a martyr, and in the persecuted church, and he would speak over and over and over, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. He just had scripture after scripture after scripture of joy unspeakable and, and living in that dimension. And then he's being persecuted and beat at night in the prison. He's having joy. We find out, no, it's the, it's the opposite. The more serious the times seem, the more important it is actually to find those moments to laugh and to have joy and what could be called entertainment. One last thing on that, you know, uh, the children of Israel, they had just left. 400 years of being enslaved by Egypt and they're just starting the wilderness journey and I mean they have got nothing established and they just have made it they just seen the Red Sea cover uh, Pharaoh and his army it's just a few chapters later and the Lord begins giving instructions now Moses here's what I want built the priority and it's a tabernacle and then he begins to say I have specifically chosen and he tells about Bezalel and then Aholiab and these guys and he says they are very talented in working with silver and gold and brass and cloth and colors and red and blue and then the Lord has these point by point extravagant uh, uh, um, uh, of everything from the curtains from from the little you know the, the curtain holders and and what you will do and then it's the clothing of Aaron you will do this for beauty and for glory it's like it's just so not practical it's so not pragmatic, and that's the part I had to get used to. I have to. I was. I was uh, disassociated from the God of beauty, the God of creativity, because I was just too practical and pragmatic. It'd be sort of like the disciples. That money, you know, the the woman pouring the perfume on Jesus' feet. It's like that could have fed a lot of the poor. And then we think of all the all these things, because you know, there's over two thousand five hundred pounds of gold that the children of Israel gave just to be put into into the tabernacle right after they just leave they're, they're in the wilderness desert and this is their priority is just what seems like 
sheer uh, um, extravagance in creativity. And so that's just a part of God that we really have to get in touch with, or we're not going to reveal that to the world, and they remain with a distorted perspective of God, which is what most of them do have. Yeah, so Bobby, I wanted to, to come to you and, and um, you know, there's something that, you know, Johnny was alluding to. I know you've talked about it before, um, even with like uh, King Solomon, when the Queen of Sheba visited him, like she could tell that he was a servant of God through the extravagance, not extravagance, through the incredible art um, that he was able to kind of illustrate through the staircases and everything. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think, like you mentioned, Johnny, I think just Christians have kind of gotten ourselves, we've gotten ourselves in a place where um, it's easy to just kind of dismiss all of that as of the world. And, and in some ways, that's like the easy way out rather than being able to move into these areas and be able to express through arts and entertainment um, without letting yourself kind of move over to a worldly perspective. So, Bobby, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm so excited because I really believe that God's awakening reformers in every mountain and especially arts and entertainment. And we need them. But there is this sense of excellence. I think the Queen of Sheba was drawn to not only the presence of the Lord, but the presence of the Lord in excellence. And you can see that happening in the body of Christ right now. We're not lagging. We're starting to lead. Things are changing in arts and entertainment. The quality that God is releasing, and I think we're getting it. That's why. It's like, gosh, you didn't need it before because you didn't value it before. And now that you value it, I'm throwing an anointing that you actually value. And so God doesn't cast his pearls before swine either. And so now we're valuing. We're saying, God, we, we need this anointing. We want it. And he's releasing reformers with excellence, uh, bringing hope, bringing life, shouting what's God doing. I mean, imagine um, Samuel. And before Samuel was born, the Bible says that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. So think that through. God's narrative was rare in those days. There was no air game. There was no media. There was no release. And imagine us being in a season right now where even the Taliban uh, Al Qaeda, they understand the power of media. Can you imagine the church not? Can you imagine the church lagging right now? And the Lord's just like, okay, uh, I, I'm releasing this because you value it. And I think there's a secret in that. And so I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about these Samuels that are raising up right now, um, not with just something to say, but actually speaking what God is saying. Uh, that's what I love about Johnny and Elizabeth and many um, in our stream who really understand there's a narrative that needs to be spoken right now. And if you're silent and you don't say what needs to be said, it's almost like um, guilty by omission. You want to make sure you're hearing from heaven and you're releasing that. And then also I think about war and I think about what media has and arts and entertainment have done for our troops over the years. In, in different places of the world, how America is so good about saying, we're sending you people from arts and entertainment. I think about um, Don Potter and when he was traveling um, with the uh, mother, uh, the Judds, mother and daughter, and they would go over and I remember them playing for overseas and for large groups that were uh, fighting for the freedom of our nation as well as others. Uh, we do well. The reason why God established feasts in the Old Testament, and that is so we could have a good time, we could get off the religious spirit, and we could party. And we need to do some of that. Oh, come on. Come on. So that kind of takes us real nicely. You just teed it up perfectly. Speaking of people that are doing it. Um, one of the things that's so exciting about this event that is coming up is uh, the lineup of speakers that you guys have brought in for this event. Can you guys speak to some of these people and why? Uh, I think some people might be surprised at who some of them are, but can you guys speak to that? Absolutely. Um, first, I just want to say we are so excited about partnering with you guys to begin with. We had such a great time doing our first Rise Summit with you there in Portland, not in Portland, in Bend, Oregon. And um, we love an excuse to, to partner with Kingdom Learning and with um, 
the Eagle Mountain Church family there. And so we're grateful for you guys. Um, and, you know, we're, as a ministry, we're, we're trying to stay in our lane. And we know that you guys are too. And we see the, the crossover of the apostolic um, resource center that you guys are and the um, prophetic that we bring to the table. And then we both have the same heart for reformation and equipping um, reformers to really go into these areas of culture and partner with God and bringing heaven to earth. So um, we worked with your team and our team worked on this as well to get a lot of these speakers. But in media, um, we have Charlie Kirk from Turning Point USA. Um, our daughter Justice has worked um, as an ambassador for their organization for a while. And so that's how uh, we got introduced to his, his message and, and his messaging. And he has an incredible um, impact on young adult Christians um, all over the United States and really internationally now. And just does a first class job with what he, what he does and his podcast that he puts out. So he's going to speak to us um, as one who's really pioneered in this uh, media arena. And then also um, Clay Clark, who is, he was a, a business entrepreneur um, that saw a lot of success on the mountain of the economy. And God, you know, surprisingly shifted him over part of his story. You're going to get to hear it, but um, is that he was surprised by the Lord when he launched him over more into media. Um, same thing with David Harris Jr., um, we are excited about his voice. He is so passionate and edgy and um, has so much to contribute in the area of media. And it just seems like he's one of those that's just really barely getting started with what God has for him in that um, arena. And let's see, who Couple else? Name, Rick and Sharon Skaggs. Of course, he's a... That's on, I was going through the media first. Oh, right? I see. That's on the other Why one. Why don't you tell me about David and Stacy Wyden? Well, their um, uh, their program is called Flyover Conservative, I think, and they're yeah. they have I think they both went to Bethel uh, School of Ministry, but they have found a real niche and and kind of speaking for the we'll call them the Patriot uh, group out there. Of course, Clay Clark is leading that in a yeah. lot of places and, and doing that, and um, they just have uh, they just have a real anointing to do what. Uh, they're doing are you are we just doing yeah so that's mainly media and then we have so many on the arts entertainment side oh, yeah. um starting with um someone that's on the business side brock shine and he's an attorney in orange county and has worked alongside of many um christians in the industry and really seen um a lot from all kinds of sides um super knowledgeable soup, yeah just brilliant connected Andre Ford. Um, Andre Ford. He is a super scout for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we connected after the the Super Bowl. It's been great um, uh, with them, and so he and his he and his wife are are amazing. You'll love to hear uh, his his story. Yeah, on the sports side of things, that's exciting to get to hear his perspective and what God's doing in that whole arena of sports is a, is a huge part of arts and entertainment. Kim Alexis, who's, uh, she was one of the first original supermodels, um, and loves Jesus yes. has an incredible relationship with the Lord and has learned so much. She's one that is definitely pioneered in this arena. And I think she's honestly just getting started with what, what God has for her next. God has positioned her for, um, some more impact. And who I was uh, talking about a little while ago, or I don't know if I got the name out, Ricky and Sharon Skaggs. And of course, Ricky Skaggs, uh, they, they both were, uh, are still country music stars. And he yeah. was, you know, he's like a legend. They are. There, and, yeah. and, um, they, Locals here in Nashville. Yeah, they love the Lord. And we've established a friendship with them. We're, we're glad for you to be able to hear them. And there's that's not even half the names and voices yeah, that we've so mentioned. More. Their stories are all amazing and We've that's got part some of, artists in here um, yeah yeah and that's what's awesome about being able to again to show up on in media is it allows people to have a voice that have a call every one of these has a communication gift mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have a place to do so if there wasn't this um this capability that we do have now because of the internet 
And I want to just address um, who this event is for. So yeah, this yeah. is our first of three online only events. And so August 27th and 28th, we ended up having so many speakers that we added the night of the 27th. So we'll start on a Friday evening and go all day on Saturday. Um, if you can't watch the whole thing live, you can come back and watch it later. You will have um, your own access to it. And um, you can go through it at a pace that you'd like to. We're excited about the live part of it. We're going to be live with you the entire time. Johnny and I are. We're hosting it ourselves. And um, Johnny is 